Welcome back to another devlog. Thanks again for all the comments, likes and subscribes. My channel's hit 180 subscribers this week, which is crazy. Thanks to those that joined the Discord and shared their projects, I've loved looking through them. I started this week by looking over my fish movement script. It worked great as a placeholder, but this week I intend on improving it a lot. I had a lot of comments and messages from people telling me to use Boyd's, especially the video by Sebastian. I watched his video and researched both Boyd's and flocking algorithms more in depth. I got the behaviours working correctly, and the fish began schooling. However, this wasn't really what I wanted in this case. I may come back to flocking or Boyd's in the future, when I make fish that do school, especially the likes of sardines or anchovies. I did play around with the Boyd's settings to make them not flock with each other and instead just move around freely. However, this didn't really have the same effect of fish. It looked more like birds. I believe I can make a more realistic version myself, using my old planned method. I watched a lot of aquarium videos online to study fish behaviour and watch especially how they interacted with each other. I mostly looked at smaller fish and what they do when they get close to each other. I noticed a lot of the smaller fish snapped at different angles and then darted away as to avoid each other. This was a realistic effect I wanted for my tank. So I went back to square one, I erased all of my current movement scripts, the nodes and everything else. In the previous devlog, the fish would just select a random node within the scene and then travel to it. Upon reaching that node, he would select another and so on. I didn't want any nodes in my scene as I wanted to give my fish complete freedom. So as I originally planned, I added in draw lines to each fish. Initially the fish had one draw line. It would select a random coordinate within the tank boundaries by calculating the tank size and fish size. The fish would then check to see if it had a clear path to those coordinates, without hitting other fish or obstacles. If it had a clear path, it would begin travelling toward the coordinates, but if anything like an obstacle or tank or fish or anything got in its path, it would reselect new coordinates and instead travel to those. It all worked surprisingly great, the fish avoided each other the best they could. They would occasionally clip through obstacles or other fish, but this could be fixed later. I slowly started adding the features back into my script. I'd added slow turning, speed, and even avoidance to the fish. Now that I had the fish avoiding each other, obstacles, and the tank, I could slowly re-add each feature I had in previously, such as feeding, idling, and hunger. I personally think this looks a lot better than Boyd's, and it's a lot easier for me to customise, which will be handy for future fish. The only time the fish did collide with each other was when they were fighting over food, which I kind of like. Makes it look as if the fish are shoving each other out of the way for the food, which people complimented in the previous videos. Today I went back to the issue with the fish colliders. I noticed they would dip in and out of obstacles as well as other fish. It was only a tiny bit, but I felt like it needed to be corrected. I added in four more draw lines per fish surrounding the initial centered line. I also changed the food detection code today. Before now they would track the first food they saw and chase it till it got eaten or despawned. Then if they were still hungry they would find another. Now it detects whether any food is in the scene and targets the closest food to the fish. This means that the fish will still contest food from each other but hopefully to a lesser degree than before. I added in a basic targeting mechanic for the fish. Using a ray cast and a layer mask for the tanks, I've made it so you can click on the fish through the tank. For now this doesn't really do anything, but I will be working on it more tomorrow. I finished up the day by adding in more camera angles. I added in cameras for the front, the back, the sides and a top down view, as well as a free roaming one that you can rotate 360 degrees around the tank. Today I added some functionality to the fish targeting system, by adding in some basic UI. In the future this will display a lot of details of the fish, but for now I'll just add some basics like gender, size and colour. I gave each fish a gender that was randomised when they spawn, the same way that the colour works. Both of these will be changed in the future, but it works well for testing purposes. I made the fish detect its own colour, size and scale when clicked, and then hooked that up to the UI to display the information. Next up I added one last camera to my game, a follower cam, so when you target a fish you can select to follow that fish around the tank. I then added the rotation camera functionality to it so you can view the fish in 360 degrees. 
I felt like the follower cam could do with something else, so I added in a zoom and zoom out functionality. And I also added that to the rotating tank cam. In future I might add zooming to all cameras, but I'm not sure yet. What are your opinions? My current fish have been too big for their tank, and that really didn't look right. So I scaled them down and redid their growth stages. I think it looks a lot better now and a lot more realistic. Next up I added in selling fish with a simple equation. Currently black clownfish are worth more than orange, which will make sense later in the game as you'll start with the orange ones and you need to get lucky when breeding to make a black. The breeding system will work similar to Animal Crossing's flower hybriding, but I'll get more into that in a later devlog. Now that selling was out of the way, breeding was the last major feature I had planned this week. I added in a second food object for breeding, a breeding pill. It's just a sphere placeholder for now, and is spawned by hitting the B key. This of course will be changed in future, but for testing purposes this worked great. First I made it so any fish could mate at any point. If two fish ate a pill, they would travel towards each other, touch, and then breed. A fish cannot breed if they are hungry though. I had some issues setting this up, but over time I got it working well. I then set it up so only a fully grown fish could mate, and then added it in so one had to be female and the other had to be male. Also if two males are fed a breeding pill and only one female, the first one to get to her position will breed. The other will still be able to mate, but only when another female is able to breed by eating a pill. This worked great and gave a little cute effect when they breed with each other. I really liked it a lot. I added in a cooldown of one minute after birthing, before the fish would be able to eat another breeding pill. This of course was for testing purposes and will be changed in the future. To end the week, I planned out a second fish. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to make, but I knew that I wanted another small reef fish. My friend suggested making a saltwater angelfish, and I thought that was a great idea. This is only my second 3D model I've ever made, and it's by no means perfect. It'll most likely get changed a lot, but here it is so far. I'll add a time lapse in the background so you can see the process I went through. I'll try and get it implemented and rigged up by next week. Thanks so much for watching.